Okay, good afternoon. This is Mr. McGee. I'm going to go through your IAs here and offer some feedback. If you can look and also see the specific time that you have, that'll help you scroll to the uh, specific segment where I do yours. Um, on the other hand, it would be nice for you to watch and see other people so you can all kind of learn from each other. Uh, these are going to be anonymous as well, so you cannot see um, you cannot see whose is who. So it's just kind of all about learning from each other. But again, you can scroll to the specific time fragment and see when yours is. So let's go ahead and start this first one here. Research question. I do like that they have the title right there. And you might want to maybe rephrase the title, but we're not really worried about the title just yet, just so they're not the same. But either way, it is pretty good. To what extent does varying seeds affect an individual's heart? Or, oh, what is, sorry, I'm getting a lot of people doing plant labs. To what extent does varying speeds affect an individual's heart rate over a five minute time period? Okay. Varying speeds affect an individual's heart rate. Okay, this is well defined. I guess I'm not, now keep in mind this is with, I'm trying to read these as I go so that I can interpret this as I go. Varying speeds, my initial thought is, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by varying speeds here. So um, make sure, maybe clarify that here as we go through, uh, whatever that is. Background information. So this is where you're gonna tell me everything that you can regarding this. And it looks like you've got a lot more research to do here as well. And likewise, stick something in there with citations, things like that. But well, let's just see what you have. Paragraphs discussing background. Why was this lab tree house? Okay, well, this is my title here, so let's get rid of that. Exercise is an important factor in my life. Sports on top of EMT. I want to capitalize that there, which is a lot of physical movement. However, I have not been very, I have not been good at cardio. Okay, does my heart reach its maximum heart rate too early on? Does it increase more due to speed? Cardio. Okay, so you've got a personal engagement segment set up there, and you're asking good questions. These are things that you can also throw in your conclusion later on to talk about follow-up labs. So this isn't bad, but it doesn't really lead me to show that you have any background knowledge over the heart or you've done any research on how you're going to set up your lab, uh, you know, why you chose certain people to test, or what database you're looking in. These are things that you're really going to want to show that you've done your research before you've actually done your experiment. So again, dig deeper with that there, okay? Uh, on the other hand, you have established a personal connection. Um, oh, also ethical considerations, all of that. Make sure you kind of find a way to throw that in there. Hypothesis and explanation. So all of this should kind of lead into your hypothesis. And it looks like you're putting my stuff here, so I'm going to skip over that. And again, in your final lab, make sure you don't have this in here. This you can cut out. Okay, my hypothesis is that as speed increases, our heart rate will increase. Again, you're saying as speed increases. I'm not sure what you mean by speed. Is this how fast you blink your eyes? How fast you're running? Um, how fast time goes by? Is that as, I mean, I think I'm, I'm assuming you mean running, but again, it's one of those you're not really establishing, and this is where it ties back in here. You don't have a clear research question, and your hypothesis needs to be clear there. As speed increases, our heart rate will increase. However, I believe it will plateau around the three minute mark. This is because our bodies either adjust, get used to a new level. Okay, so this is good. I like that you made this hypothesis that eventually it will reach equilibrium or it will plateau around a three minute mark. And you said because it will, uh, you will get used to this activity level. But again, why not the two minute mark? Because our bodies will adjust. Why not a one minute mark? Why did you pick three minutes? This is really where your background research comes into play. You've got a lot to research there on looking up studies where people have done anything with exercise intensity. By the way, you talked about max heart rate. What is it? What is max heart rate? Why does the heart accelerate? What are mechanisms in the body that make the heart accelerate? Will being tested make you nervous? And that will cause you to have your heart rate go up. That's actually called white coat syndrome when you go in a doctor's office and your heart rate artificially gets high. None of this was explored here, so definitely get into this here. But, uh, I, you, I mean, you have a hypothesis. Again, just be a little more clear with that. And I like how you made this prediction and you establish it. But again, there's definitely stuff you want to dig a little deeper with. Sorry there's a little background noise to it. I got the uh, laundry behind me here. I have headphones on too, so I can't exactly hear how loud it is. I just know there's noise in the background. Okay, next one, identify variables. Well, this one I'm still not clear on because it sounds like you're saying a speed increases, but I'm still not sure. So let's see if you do it here. Okay, 
Again, we want to get rid of touch section A because that's what I'm writing in there, but I, you know, if you're using it for this draft, that's fine, but just on the final version, make sure you change this here. IV, the speed of the tread, okay, out of nowhere comes a treadmill. Speed of the treadmill, so you're talking speed of running, speed of walking, uh, you know, how fast somebody, I assume a treadmill, you're gonna make someone run faster or slower. That's good, but this is where you want to define this, and again, Talk about use of a treadmill up here or limitations with the treadmill or what brand treadmill. I mean, you know, some treadmills are hard to run on. What about shoes? I don't, there are a lot of things to explore. There's just not a lot of exploration at this point. But you have speed of treadmill. Okay, how are you going to measure the speed of treadmill? Uh, you know, what is the unit you're going to use? And what are the increments of the units? Are you just going to turn it up with your hands over your eye and you know whatever numbers it lands on that's what they're going to run at or are you going to have them run and they have to adjust it according to I mean these are things that you I would say as of right now your dependent variable I get is your heart rate you're measuring that but speed of the treadmill is not really well defined and by the way I'm getting here at this point I get you've been talking heart rate but now you're saying heart rate peak or max. This is kind of different than what we're talking about here. And so this is where now your dependent variable, I'm not quite sure what you mean by this. And never on your variable identification use or something else because it's gotta be one or the other. So max heart rate, I assume you're not talking about this here, but max heart rate is not the same as peak heart rate at a given intensity. So I'm assuming you're saying, um, this, or I, I guess I would say just leave it at heart rate and your units as beats per minute there, but something kind of along those lines. Again, you're on the right path here, but just make sure you specify this a little more. Uncertainties, taller people may not have. Okay, this doesn't have to be here. This is all kind of stuff that you talk about in your background or your constants and controls. Let's actually go here and look at your constants. So again, I'm still not quite sure what you're doing with this lab. I, I mean, I have an idea and I could probably design one based on your suggestion, but I, I'm still, your lab's a little vague to this point and there, it could be taken several different directions. But you say here, length of time, they're gonna run at five. They're gonna run for five minutes at a time, okay. Now speed will increase increments, controlled treadmill. Again, try to make these bulleted so they're in a list kind of as it shows in the manual because when it's written like this, it's just all cluttered together. Uh, the, this section should be kind of a list as it will show you in the manual though. Because uh, this is all also communication points and this isn't communicated as good as it could be here. Um, but yeah, five minutes running at a time, speed increase increments. I assume this is your title here. That's why I'm trying to make sure it's not part of the same sentence. That's again where I'm trying to control on treadmill, same place, workout clothes, shoes, shorts, tennis. Okay, yeah, see, I'm a little confused by your descriptions here. Controlled on the treadmill and, okay, see, that's not, all right, that's not the same. Because you put a period here and then this one doesn't have a period. And so environment, I'm assuming, is a whole different thing, but the comma made me think, okay, see where I'm getting confused and it shouldn't be this way. So please make sure you fix this. Also, speed increase increments controlled on the treadmill. Um, I think I know what you're saying, but it's not very clear. And keep in mind, your papers will be moderated by people in foreign countries, potentially. You need to be more clear and specific on what you mean here, okay? Um, same thing with these. Please elaborate with your sentences a little bit more what exactly is happening. Overall, you do have kind of the idea here. Um, hopefully all of this is in your procedure as well. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Treadmill has timer, heart rate monitor, and speed. Okay, again, please make a list with this. Uh, what, about this what about the brand of the treadmill? I mean, aren't some treadmills cheaper? Some tread, I mean, that may affect it. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's it. Procedure methods, another thing too, do you notice how you have one section running into another and there's no space between them? You might want to space these apart and then never start a section on one page and then start the whole thing on the other page. Try to keep them formatted on the same page if you can. Okay, here looks like I have your procedure, but unfortunately you're not, you, I guess I see the numbers, but again, you're writing this as a paragraph. Please bullet these kind of in a line like a list here, okay? Because this is all affecting communication. 
Well, let's see your procedure. Step one, I don't see a step one there, but you say make sure everyone is prepared Follow the and follow lead up requirements. Um, I'm not sure what lead up requirements are, so again, you've got to specify that. Number two, have everyone complete round one. Complete round one, a speed of five minutes. After completion until, I guess I'm not sure what round one is there. Again, you might want to have a procedural section where you talk about, uh, make it separate, like a section on setup, and then a section with round one, round two, round three. Per, like put these in different set or different paragraphs or, or different with a different heading over it, all under the procedure section. That may make it easier and better in its communication. Okay, everyone will have the same break time break time I would say time of break or something or time to rest between sets since each person will be waiting the same number of five minute rounds for it to cycle back to them justify I'm, I'm just trying to get through this here a little bit um, round two will be five minutes long at three miles an hour Round three will be Okay, so overall, this is very, you know, this is very, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be this hard for me to try to pull it all together to figure out what is going on. So again, for your procedure, please make sure you break this up into brackets, have a diagram or something, what it's going to look like, even if you put a picture of a treadmill and put the speed on it just to kind of give us a visual or something. But definitely make this in a list format, not in a paragraph, because this is very hard for me to pull together, uh, you know, after working all day right now. And you can imagine those moderators uh, working overseas and they're grading hundreds and hundreds of these. You've got to make it make it easy for them to give you a good grade here, uh, since this is easy to fix relatively. But this whole thing, it looks like round two through round three and all of these other ones are kind of thrown in this one sentence, but round two, but again, I'm not quite sure what you what are rounds like. What what specifically? I assumed you were doing this all at the same time. So is a round a trial? I guess I'm not quite sure. Are they doing? Is one person doing the entire five minutes, or is it just round one is one person over five minutes? Because it looks here. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Um, but my biggest thing here is there's just not a lot of control with your experiment. I notice it says here hydration is allowed until it is back to that person, but how much should they be drinking? Um, you know, should it, is there a way you can control how much they're drinking? It doesn't necessarily have to be 10 milliliters, but couldn't you say something along the lines of, you know, they are allowed to drink until they are no longer thirsty? Uh, I mean, if everybody gets given a rule like that, at least it's an attempt to be controlled. Um, if everyone to complete round one at a speed of 0.5 miles an hour. Um, okay, or is there a warm-up period of time? Uh, what are How long are the people resting prior to doing any of this? It says everyone will have the same break time between sets, but what about this initial one here? Um, are they listening to music between this? Or are they, some of them are probably going to want to, or is there anything they're staring at in front of them? Where will the person who's experimenting them be tested? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not quite sure. Like how well, is, what if somebody comes in and they're totally dressed up in sweaters and long, you know, pants, and then you got a sweatshirt, you know, and another person comes in and they are wearing a t-shirt and shorts. I mean, their heart is obviously going to have to pump harder to cool their body off if they're wearing a lot of gear. So all of this ties in together. I'm just not seeing a lot of control. So overall, this is not a very strong design right there. You've got the skeleton, but you got to get some more meat on this. So let's look at your data table. I should be able to, in fact, I'm not even really looking at this right now. I should be able to look at this without any prior knowledge of your lab and have a very good idea as to what I'm looking at. So now that I'm looking at your lab, I guess, yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at here. And so that's where, you know, my objective advice to you is you want to make it where somebody can look at this and know exactly what's happening. So this here is the speed someone has ran. And now you're talking about their heart rate, but above here, you were talking about almost like the heart rate peak, almost like the time it takes to get to that max heart rate. 
uh, or how high that max heart rate is, I guess that I'm not quite sure of. Again, you've got to specify this in here. Also, decimal places, you've got 0.53579. These have to have the same number of decimal points here. So if you're measuring it with an accuracy of a decimal place, then these should be 3.0, 5.0, 7.0. Also, why these increments? Why did you go from half to 3579? That's not an even increment. And it doesn't have to be as long as you, you can justify why you picked a certain thing. Um, and my biggest issue I guess I have with this is what about their heart rate when they're not doing any walking? Shouldn't you have oh, a control group where they're not doing anything to see what their heart rate is? That is definitely something you're going to want to do. Otherwise, you do have five trials it looks like and you do have a mean and a standard deviation, so I'll give you that. And as of right now, it looks like you have a table that's there you just need to really define because do you know what exactly you're measuring here okay um, also ran you have no unit here what's your uncertainty like is it pretty accurate remember the rules for measuring decimal points all of that is in the manual or let me know how accurate is your heart rate measurement is it digital is it pretty precise again see my manual on that but uh, got a little bit to work on here but overall you've got a skeleton to work on I'm not sure if this was kind of turned in last minute or something but uh, again let me know if you have any questions with this okay what effect does age have on one's reaction time so again I'm trying to read these without uh, or, or read them as I go because I want to come from the perspective of a person who is an external moderator who does not know you and wants to see can I tell exactly what I'm, you know, or can I understand exactly what I'm reading as I go through it? Because your paper should be understandable with somebody who's just taking a quick glance at it. Okay, what, a, what effect does age have on reaction time? I think that's very clear and very good research question. Okay. Uh, you might want to put research question there just so we know that's what that is. But otherwise, you've got that set up. I'll give you that. Next one. When I was coming up with ideas and what to do for my IA, I had struggled, brainstormed, to figure out what I was going to do. Then after stop, took deep breath, focus. And, uh, chose. Uh, okay, I have your background. Almost half of your background isn't really kind of relevant. Um, like you didn't have an idea and then you just came up with this. Okay. But this is the part here, it always intrigued me because I have heard that the older you get, the slower you get. Okay, do you have a source or you overheard it? Okay, maybe this is, it, it is found to be true most of the time. Where's your source and citation for that? Definitely got to dig and do some research here, cite some background sources, things like that. Uh, you know, this is a perfect place to talk about the age and its effect on your brain and do some digging on neuroscience. So please uh, dig deeper there. Sometimes you can find where there are old people succeeding as they continue to climb in age and they break the norm. Um, so you mean there's variation, some people do better, but again, how is that relevant? Uh, what about, but other times some people don't do well? I mean, Really, you just kind of, this sentence is just kind of thrown in there, but it doesn't show how it's relevant. So, something to think about. So, when thinking about this experiment, I thought that it would be cool to test out that theory. Okay, isn't this kind of more of a hypothesis, not a theory? So, please, again, uh, make sure you get your definitions on that. So, at this point, it sounds like you want to do reaction time, but I have no idea what you want to do yet. Are you using a digital timer? Or, uh, using a memory game? Like... Are you using a bunch of pictures? Like, how are you gauging memory? Are, I don't know that you know anything about memory at this point. Talk about memory. What is it in the brain? Dig deeper. Look into neuroscience. Talk about where memory is. Again, talk about what age does to the brain. Talk about, I guess there's all kinds of things you can talk about here with this. It's not really going anywhere. And that's kind of where you want to have some more background here. Pictures, diagrams, anything to show how you are thinking of taking this lab in what direction. All right, hypothesis. I believe that age will have an effect. Will have an effect on reaction time in people that are in the mid-teens to early 30s. Will have faster reaction time. Subjects that are older. I believe this will happen. Okay, I believe this will happen. Not reach their teen years. Will just be, I, people tested will not have reached their teen years. Will just be as slow as people who are of a when one, okay, so this was a little confusing here, but 
When one is still developing, the reaction time isn't as fast as one who is done developing. Finishing being said, there will be outliers. Okay, this is justified here, but this is stuff you also want to kind of throw in here and talk about that development. Because this whole thing here about teens having the better reaction is kind of coming out of left field here. Again, talk about that in your background section and make sure you are using sources, citations, other studies, anything you can find on that. Um, I wouldn't just specifically say age here. I would say, you know, you it will have an effect, um, maybe like an inverse bell curve where, or, where, or like a bell curve where memory will actually increase up until a point, but then it'll decrease after that point. Just, you don't need to pick a specific age range here. That's, that's like saying, I mean, literally it all kicks off right at 16 to 31. Uh, anyways, okay, you have that there. Your variable is age, and how are you measuring age? In lunar cycles, months, days? I assume you mean years, but again, you've got to specify, okay? Dependent variable, reaction time. Again, how are you measuring this? I assume you're measuring it in milliseconds, seconds, hours. I know some people that takes them an hour to react when I ask them a question, but you've got to specify here. Also, age, what are your increments you're going to look at? Are you going to bracket people in age, or are you just going to survey people of all ages? So if you're going to or, uh, talk to them in different brackets, you've got to think about that there. Identification of controls and constants, noise level. Okay, this is good. Um, might want to, just for communication, make this underline or embolden these titles just to kind of make it stand out from what you're describing, just like I showed in my manual there. So you've got three things. I'm thinking for a lab like this, there's going to be a lot more than three things. But you do have three. I'll give you that. But you got to develop that deeper there. And again, these should tie into your procedure. Make this list kind of a numbered list with uh, step by step below. And you obviously want to format and get rid of this underline here. And your procedure, please make sure that is numbered. That is not a numbered procedure because I wouldn't know like to go back to step four or five when there's no steps on there. Okay, and my other thing I'm looking at here is I don't see any pictures, any separation, and this is a pretty short and simple procedure. And that means there's probably going to be a lot of ways that it's, it's uh, not perfectly controlled. Take subjects into the control room. Uh, what is a control room? I don't see anything in your background about that. So you might want to talk about what is a control room? What is an ideal control room? Have them stand with their eyes closed, their arms down at their sides. Raise pencil, same distance above their head. Stool may be needed. Uh, pencil, I guess I'm not sure where the stool comes in, but you know, a little vague here. Um, Raise the pencil the same distance above their head, 18 inches. Yeah, see, I'm not quite sure why this was thrown in there. I assume you mean like, yeah, I guess you don't need you don't need the 18. And even if you did, again, we're not you don't use inches in a scientific report like this. So this really is not relevant. I would just get rid of that 18 inches there. So they're gonna, you're going to raise the pencil the same distance above their head. And I'm doing this lab in my head right now. Are you, are you raising it to the level of the eraser? Is the pencil horizontal? Is it vertical? Is the pencil upside down? Like, I, I guess there's so many variables here. I'm, it, I, everything's just kind of vague. Got to specify this. Without a countdown, say drop and release pencil. When I say drop, the stopwatch will stop. And the subject will be allowed to open their eyes and attempt to catch the pencil as it falls to the ground. Okay. So this is definitely reaction. Um, now their eyes are closed. I have to say here, their eyes are closed and you're gonna raise the pencil above their head. Isn't that gonna hit their head if you drop the pencil with their hands above their head? Arms down by their, okay, wait a minute. Ar have them stand with their eyes closed and their arms down by their sides. Raise the pencil, same distance above head. I, yeah, okay, right here I have no idea what you're saying. I, I thought you were saying have their hands above their head, same distance, but now I'm really confused. This procedure is not controlled. And again, if it's above their head, aren't you going to drop the pencil on them? Which could probably be an ethical issue there. Uh, when I say drop the stopwatch, we'll stop, and the subject will be allowed to open their eyes and attempt to catch pencil, pencil if it falls to the ground. This is a very... Um, interesting design and I think you're making this much harder than it has to be for a lab like this. You might want to look at reaction 
or ways to measure reaction time and dig deeper. But this, it could be done, but you're also talking um, people trying to see it fast enough. I mean, they could, but is it really their reaction on top of their like vision and their hearing and being startled and everything else? I mean, again, what if somebody else does this and they, do I sell, do I say drop loud or what if I say it quiet? Uh, what if you say it in a feminine voice? Would that be more soothing to people? But if you say it loud like a drill sergeant, I mean, this all could affect it and none of that's really specified there. So maybe think of recording a voice or something. Um, again, none of that's controlled. Record the subject's time. It takes them to catch the pencil. If the subject does not catch the pencil, mark it as a fault and stop stopwatch when it hits the ground. So you're keeping time even if they miss the pencil, which I'm assuming they will a lot of times. But is five seconds really their reaction time if they never caught it to begin with? So again, this isn't a very well-designed way to measure reaction time. Uh, repeat this three times with each subject. Take three times, average it out. The average time will be used, put it in the table. Okay, well, I'm going to look in your table now and... I got to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing in this table. So you have your age here, and it looks like you are measuring them in groups. But again, we go back up here, you don't have any of those brackets identified. And why did you pick these brackets? Okay, you said 0 to 15 because you said adolescence, but just something to think about. Okay, these are decent, but again, why did you, you got to justify why you picked these brackets, okay? And I'm assuming each of these represents a trial. I don't see trial anywhere up there, so that's gonna be very hard for me to know what this means, whatever the numbers are. Um, and you don't have a mean or a standard deviation in here. And again, I'm based on your last question, are you is each number here an average of three times? So you're gonna do this with six, seven, eight people, nine people, 10 people, each person does it you know, that's a total of 50 people right there. Each time is going to be three trials. Again, not quite sure. You've got a lot to work on here, but you've got a skeleton, so get to work and fill it in. Okay. This next one here, research question. How does light affect the growth of chia seeds? Okay, that's actually not bad at all. Uh, you've got a lot to research with this here. And I look in the next section, it says, I've always wondered if plants respond differently to different kinds of light. Okay, that's good. So, what made you wonder that? I mean, what do you know about chia seeds? And there's not really anything more to this, so you've got a lot more to talk about. What do you know about plants? What do you know about plants and how they germinate? What do you know about plants and how they grow? Where are you getting your chia seeds from? Uh, what have you researched about the quality of the soil that you're going to use? Or why would you use X amount of water on the plant? Uh, where are you getting the light? How are you setting? Why would you use this kind of light and plant it? I mean, all of this is not really elaborated here. This is where you've got to do some digging and show that you have tried to learn everything you can about this. Okay, so please dig deeper in your background. Hypothesis, you said... If I change the type of light that a plant gets, I will or gets, I will notice a growth. Okay, this is a very simplistic hypothesis here. Um, well, obviously, it's we would think it would change, but how do you think it's going to change? If it gets more light, it'll increase. It'll decrease. Will it reach a plateau? Is it kind of a bell curve? Is it will it reach an intensity where it'll suddenly not grow anymore? Um, and again, why does this happen? So eventually, won't there be so much light that it could get hot? I mean, will it reach a limit? Um, again, this, is, this explanation here is really simplistic. And try to tie something you've learned in here from your background and throw that in there. Uh, now, you said, I think this is because plants need sunlight to thrive. But if you did background research on germination of seeds, you'll find that seeds don't usually require sunlight early on. So therefore, it might not be really much of a change until a plant reaches a certain age. And by the way, how long are you planning on growing these? Because you will notice a change if you grow them for only two weeks versus a month. And none of that is kind of thrown in here in the background information. So please make sure you elaborate on all of this here. Okay, variables, the type of light exposed. Okay, that's good, but that's not quite what it says... I'm thinking up here, the type of light. 
That's not quite anything to see that's up here in the background. So you're talking type of light, kinds of light, not the amount of light. Are you saying the color? Because I'm not sure what other type of light there is if it's not a different color. Please make sure you elaborate. What is it? None of that is identified here. Plant growth. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward, but are you going to use a ruler? Are you going to weigh it? Are you going to measure how wide it gets? None of that is identified here. How are you going to measure the growth of the plant? You've got a lot more to dig in here. Identification of constants and controls. Okay, we do have a good size list here. Uh, and again, and I like how you listed this. There, um, make sure you say all plants will receive the same amount of water. You'll be measuring out water for each plant. Okay, that's good. This is good. Now just do this for each one. The same type of soil. All plants will receive what soil? How are you ensuring they use the same soil? What about the same pot? All plants will use the same pot, uh, same brand. You can actually take this one and throw it in here, the same type and size of pot. Uh, but is there anything else? I'm thinking of several right now that's probably not in here like this. Um, if, but again, it ties into what do you mean by kinds of light? If you're talking color, how, uh, how do you know the light's as bright as all the other colors? What if a yellow and a blue light you got from the same store, but one's brighter than the other? Uh, shouldn't the light be the same distance from the plant? So the light intensity? Um, again, these are just simple things here. What about the temperature of the water, temperature of the plants? Uh, yeah, humidity of the air. How are, how are all of these going to be controlled? Please make sure you elaborate. Next one, materials list. This needs to be numbered. It's not numbered here because I would want to look at a specific number and that's why you're going to want to get rid of these arrows here in this. Otherwise, you do have a list. Also, because your IA um, has a limit of uh, uh, 12 pages, 11 if you don't count your title page, you're going to not want to space this all out here like an English paper. So that will save you some room if you uh, get rid of that there. Also, since you're spacing these all one space, notice how you're running into another section uh, just like this, and it's not spaced between there. So you might want to consider removing or adding another space here between these sections. All right, let's look at your procedure. Now, this is going to be a complicated lab. Plant labs usually are, at least in the setup. So I can tell you right now, you're probably going to want to break these up into subsections, like have a subsection on preparing uh, for preparing to pot the plant, setting up the pot, and then another section on germinating the seeds, and then another section on measuring the results, like instead of just throwing it all in here. And also, please have pictures, diagrams, anything you can with labels, anything to make this easier to understand. It says here, prepare pots by placing 0.22 kilograms. Okay, I'm not sure where this number came from. I like that you measured it out, but again, uh, where did 0.22 kilograms come from? It just seems like a random number. In your background research, you probably want to elaborate in there why you used a certain amount of soil. Or, you know, soil will be filled to this level, so you don't have to say it's the same weight. But again, just a random number like that is very, very bizarre for a paper like this, so please make sure you correct that. Uh, miracle Grow potting mix, uh, you could probably put that in italics just to make it stand out a little more, but otherwise, I get it. You're placing the soil in the potting mix. Um, I'm going to measure out chia seeds for each pot. Okay, you probably don't want to use kilogram for a unit like this. Instead, you probably want to use grams because that kilogram... <laughs> A kilogram would indicate you're using like a bathroom scale or something like that, which is obviously not really appropriate for something as small as a chia seed. But you don't necessarily have to do that. Couldn't you just count the chia seeds or just use a use a measuring device, you know, that measures volume? I mean, just something to think about. Next, I measured, um, poured 20 milliliters. This is good, okay. Um, how are you pouring the water in there? Do you just dump it in the middle? Do you make a circle with it? Do you pour it on the edges? Do you use a sprinkler? None of that is specified and that is not controlled. Then I place them in their respective places. Where is their respective places? Next to the cold window? Next to a window? In a dark room? Uh, under a furnace? I don't know. Again, specify. One pot will go where it gets natural. Okay, so now we're in another step here. You see why we want to keep these together. One pot will go where it gets natural sunlight, another will be placed in a dark room. Uh, so dark room. 
Okay, so it looks like you have three different light sources, or two different light sources, three different light sources, sorry. You have natural sunlight, LED light, and incandescent light, okay? Um, all right, so you're trying to use them all for roughly the same amount of time. And that kind of brings me, I guess, to the biggest issue with your control here is how do you measure light intensity? Because for all practical purposes, if I look at this here, light, you, the intensity of your light, it's, uh, well, I mean, think about this. If you have an LED light, for example, that's, LEDs are going to be pretty bright. But at, on the other hand, um, yeah, on the other hand, sunlight, natural sunlight is going to be really bright. There's no way an LED is going to be that bright. And, and sunlight's very variable with clouds, but LEDs are pretty constant. Same thing with incandescent light bulbs. Even though they're different light, they're not really consistent with natural sunlight, and that's a control issue. So this is where I would either, you know, pick something easier to measure, uh, you know, to do to the plant to get it to change its growth rate, or find a way to control this better. Uh, if it were me, I would personally research sunlight and look at the proper intensity, find a way to measure it and match it with something else, or I would... You know, put a filter in front of the plant or something. I don't know, but you know, this in itself is not controlled because this plant with natural sunlight is all the time going to get a lot more light compared to the LED, and that's a lot more variation than different light sources. Okay, so please keep that in mind. And it says here you're going to weigh the plants. Um, shake the okay. Your method of getting that is good. Might want to be a little more specific, but otherwise, I've got this here. And this record your data, write your conclusion. Okay, uh, net plant growth over two weeks. Okay, so um, I'm assuming that okay, after two weeks, talk up there in your background. Why did you pick two weeks? Why? I mean, was it just out? Of, did you think it was a good idea? Was it pulled out of a hat? Think about it. Okay, uh, and again, are you measuring a plant? In, if you're measuring a plant in kilogram, I would have to think you're measuring like a, a giant tree or something. But these chia seeds are really tiny. Kilogram is not an appropriate unit for something that tiny. You have types of light here. Again, this is the problem. This, this lab just, it's not very, there's a lot of variation with sunlight and because all throughout the day, the sunlight's shining bright, then it doesn't, then it's changing direction. Whereas LED is just in a constant place at a constant brightness, same with incandescent, and you're you're doing more things to it than just the type of light. You're changing a lot of things. That's why this lab fundamentally has a flaw to it, and it's not that it can't be fixed, but I'm just more suggesting you might want to consider something else for this. Also, because you only have three different variations, I would suggest either putting two more variations here or doing more trials than just five. But as it is, you do not have enough data and enough variations to justify a conclusion that light type affects plant growth, okay? Okay, this one, I'm not sure what QAA design is here. You might wanna adjust this here. Uh, by the way, I really like your IA, how you clearly have a section here embolded and nice separations between them. So this alone, very good communication and one of the nicer ones I've seen so far with how you display this. I'll give you that. Does the distance you run affect heart rate? This is a question, so put your question mark there. The distance you run affect your heart rate. And you might wanna adjust this here a little bit like, um, something about how far some or how far an individual or the, how far in distance a person can run or something I just thinking the way that's worded there's got to be a different way to word this here affect heart rate all right background okay I can see you're trying to tie it in personally but we definitely don't have a lot here let's see what you got I'm an active guy I work out with friends I knew my a ha to I'm not sure what a ha is might want to adjust that here. You want your IA to be exercise related. Oh, I'm assuming that's a typo. I remember my mom had a heart rate monitor, thought it would be cool to test this out. It's intriguing because it combines working out with friends and science. Okay, I, it sounds like you just came up with this because you wanted an IA idea, which, you know, that is fine. But for this IA, 
really show me why you're committed to this lab besides you're an athlete and your mom happened to have a heart rate monitor sitting around. What do you know about society? What do you know about heart rate and disease and how this affected you with you know, wanting to make the best of this? This is all about your ethical considerations too. So please, please dig deeper in this. You said it's relevant to society. It's a good way because a good way to stay healthy is to work out. And uh, I would say something about the heart. Now, with your lab, nowhere in here do you talk about running. Do you talk about why the heart speeds up or s slows down? Uh, any research that shows exercise can vastly improve, um, can improve cardiovascular fitness. Talk about ways in which we can measure cardiovascular fitness, maybe a diagram of the heart. I don't know, but this is where you get to show us what you know about the heart. And none of this is here, but you definitely have some room to grow there. And I'm still not quite sure what you're measuring, so let's look down here. I think the longer you run, the higher your heart rate will be. Okay, before I read the next section, think about that for a minute. So if somebody runs a marathon, their heart rate should be longer than somebody who runs 100 meters in a class or 100 meters or something. Uh, that definitely cannot be true because clear, I mean, there has to be a limit where your heart rate goes up. You are here, the longer you run, the harder it is. That is true. This will allow your heart rate to raise. Um, the problem is here, you don't really have a very clear or well thought through explanation. And so you're going to want to think about this one here a little more. Now, let's see your variables. Distance of running. Okay, so you're going to change how far people run for. And you're going to measure heart rate in beats per minute. Put a space there. This is good. And distance running, thank you for putting your increments. My only issue with this is you're really... By everything I'm reading, you're talking about exercise, and that would imply somebody who's running a very far distance. Your biggest increment on here is 100 yards, a football field. And on my worst day, I can run 100 yards. Uh, wouldn't you think that we should probably up that to something even further versus something that's short? Because 100 yards is actually considered a short distance uh, anaerobic exercise in modern workouts. You're not even getting into aerobic endurance. So yeah, you're going to want to change those increments there to something else. Identification of constants. All right, I like the setup here and how these are bracketed. Maybe consider emboldening these here and being a little bit more elaborate with setting, like, you know, uh, participants will be in the same setting, etc. By the way, uh, what about ethical considerations of this? Talk about your uh, how people are going to sign the or the uh, the informed consent form or something like that, and it's in your appendix. I mean, of your lab. Uh, again, all that's got to be talked about here. Materials list. Okay, how about just a heart rate monitor, the per minute machine? That's cool. Timer, cones. Um, I think you mean cones for lanes or some or markers, whatever you want to put there. So maybe have a. Okay, well, this is my section, so obviously you don't want to have that in there. Uh, and now the procedure. This definitely needs to be elaborated on here. <coughs> and please have it numbered. A procedure should always have a one, two, three step in it. You might even want to have like a setup section, but you say get to the field, explain what they will be doing. You might want to put these together, actually. Setup cones. Shouldn't the setup have come before you get the participants on the field? Um... Record, tier, BP, I think you mean their BPM, their heart, BPM, I think you mean record their resting heart rate, that's not specified, so please be clear on this before they start running. Have each participant run the same distance and record their beats per minute. Record every run and get a 10 second, okay, yeah, this procedure is a lot of holes in it. What are they doing until they get there? How long are they resting before they do their first run? Uh, in between their runs, are you having them rest? Are you using the mm -hmm. same participants eat five times, or are you just having them do one and then bringing in more participants? Uh, are they allowed to listen to music when they run? What is the weather like outside? Don't you think all of these comes into play, even the temperature of the day? How do you ensure none of this is affecting your results? Again, please make sure you elaborate. This is, I think you know what to do there. And the next one, your data table, please make sure this is all on the same page. That's a simple formatting thing. And if I look at your table, I should be able to instantly tell uh, what you're doing with your lab. 
can see you say distance run in yards. And for that reason, you don't need to put the yard after every single thing. By the way, we are doing a science lab. I probably shouldn't have to say this again, but please don't use yards. I would change this to meters, not yards, which is an imperial unit. And again, add a space between BPM. Uh, well, you got to start there. Um, I think the table will work there. All right, it's a start. So take that for what it is and uh, got some things to improve here. Okay, this one. How does the concentration of a proton pump inhibitor affect the synthesis of guanine in slime mode, Fisarium polycephalum? Okay, I think we've talked about this one here a little bit. The concentration of the proton pump inhibitor affect the synthesis of guanine. This one should be interesting, but I have clearly here a, a concentration of this proton pump inhibitor. That is clearly an independent variable, and you are measuring what I'm assuming is concentration of guanine. Right? Well, it's a clear research question. It's a complicated one, but it is a clear one. Now, if we start reading this here, we should pick up on what your background knowledge is, how it all works together, and hopefully see some sources of it all tied together. So let's see what you got here. Slime molds are a genus of protists. And this research paper shall explore one species, Visarium polycyphrium. Grows at an optimal temperature. Beautiful. And thanks for using Celsius, not Fahrenheit, with little difference between intervals, generally temperature. Thank you for using sources. Beautiful. Is it important to decay materials, bacteria? Reach it, however, increases environment. Beautiful. You're tying into real life. Why does this? Why is this necessary to study? How is this going to? How is this going to uh, be impacted by anything in the real world? That is all tied together there. You've also shown ethical considerations of this report, too. I love it. Okay, guanosine monophosphate, GMP is one of the critical the DNA RNA synthesis. Beautiful. Talking about where it's relevant. Tell me a little. Maybe throw a little picture in there. Find a diagram of you know, GMP. Uh, I don't think DNA RNA is necessary to talk about, but definitely GMP is something you could put a picture of or something in there. It just adds to the creativity of your paper. But as it is, this is nice. And you've sourced it right here. So you're telling us what exactly is this chemical here. Slime molds rely on this for the synthesis of DNA, which is obvious because guanine comes from it. You're talking about this here. And they cannot remove proton cell structure. Beautiful. Does not fully know why these mechanisms activate. All right. Might even be a little bit more things to research on this last thing here, but I'd say for the most part, you're establishing what's happening at the biochemical level and how your lab, you're setting us up here, how this is all going to tie in together. Proton pumps inhibitors reduce the ability of cells to produce proton end products like ATP. For example, in humans, parietal cells build acids by activating hydrogen, potassium, ATPase to push hydrogen ion cell into the cannuliculus, then into the stomach. However, in protists like slime mold, beautiful. And you got it sourced. Very nice. Um, this biochemical mechanism, by the way, it would be very nice if you found a way to maybe Microsoft Paint or something, draw a picture, or even if you drew a picture on paper and found a way to upload it in here, what, uh, whatever it takes. I think this biochemical process would be very good to have an annotated diagram. You would be excellent, actually, for this. Pour over slime mold requires... Okay, you have, so what you're doing here is again justifying the biochemical means and the pathway for this. Very good, and this should all tie in here to what you're talking about, the proton pump inhibitor. If the concentration, and thank you for italicizing this, separating it, your communication so far is excellent. I am really liking this. If the concentration of the proton pump inhibitors increase in the environment, then through a reduction in GPM or GMP synthase activity, guanine should decrease. Very good. And now you are justifying it, just like we said here. And this is tying into what there is before. Again, it's all justifying it. Very good explanation justifying your hypothesis. Make sure um, for these in communication, because it's so excellent at this point, add a space here so all this isn't tight together. 
Variables, independent variable, the presence of the proton pump inhibitor per microgram in agar. And I think we talked about how you were going to do this, which was for many people obviously out of reach, but this is where it's going to get interesting. Okay, number of guanine bases, historical run, beautiful. Okay, number of guanine bases. Okay. This one, I'm probably my, honestly, this is where the diagram would probably help me because I'm probably going to have to draw this out and make sure everything checks out. But for the most part, the presence of the proton pump inhibitors per microgram, and it looks like you're increasing it in units here. Um, and the only thing I have to, because, oh, that's right, the brand name, that's what you're missing. I would throw that brand name, what is that brand? Omeprazoli, Om Omeprazoli. I would stick that here just to kind of tie it in together, but otherwise it looks outstanding. And the number of guanine bases, deviation from the average of 376,000 bases with a standard deviation of 2.5 compared to historical records. Beautiful, because that is how, and I assume you're doing this with your PCR like we had talked about. Outstanding. Okay. okay. Identification of constants. Okay, my only thing is, by the way, it's all clustered together. I would say this is just a communication issue here. So maybe move these over a tad bit or uh, embolden, whatever it takes, but just so it doesn't look all clustered together there. Like obviously the agar medium, find a way to embolden that or, or italicize it or something if you want to see my manual for reference regarding that. And again, this is where I'm going to really have to give it some thought here regarding the specifics of your setup, but you do have what appears to be a good number of controls. Let's go ahead and see your materials list. You may upgrade to a new PCR next month. I assume it's your birthday next month. That is awesome. But thank you for specifying the system just because it does, it, there is an impact on the type of system. Yes. Okay. Everything is, that is a lot of stuff. I'm going to assume this is all good for the most part. And this is outstanding. Nice job. I recommend it. I'll turn it to a bad idea. <laughs> Why don't you talk about this in your uh, conclusion, how this could have been better or even in your background, but all this very good. Because uh, this is all ethical considerations, isn't it? And so, again, these are things you can talk about here about why you did not choose these and you chose alternatives uh, on another hand. Okay, So definitely throw that in there. And again, space these out. Procedures. And if I put the procedure here, the only thing I would throw in here as a suggestion is your procedure, you probably want to have it broken into brackets, like step one, the setup. Uh, step two, like preparing or you know preparing agar trays, preparing PCR, preparing uh, or, or obtaining the or, or setting up the slime molds, uh, incubation period, and then like measuring the sample. Like separate these into different subsections and with procedures under them. You could do that instead of putting it all here, and definitely have pictures, diagrams, anything mm -hmm. to aid us in your setup. And keep in mind that. Although we've talked about this, an external moderator will have not talked about this with you, and you want to make it as easy for them to understand as possible what is happening and what you're taking and what's taking place here. Now, my first assumption here, without going through this entire thing, is this seems relatively short for how complex this procedure is. Obtaining slime mold. Carolina's brand name. Maybe you find a way to italicize that or put the logo here, just so we know it's a trade. Caroline isn't just a person's name or something, and prepare is not a company, so I would lowercase that. Um, prepare it yourself. Okay, so here's the preparation, like I said. Now that you have the sample slime molds out of the incubator, take a few. Um, yeah, definitely elaborate on this procedure, because you've got such a good setup to your lab. You just want to make sure, you're, even if your procedure is longer, that's why I would say break these into subsections. Now let's look at your data table see what you have here okay so data table probably want to put some type of a title above this what exactly are we looking at but the big thing here is labeling of your increments and i'm going to make a guess that you've already measured your controls here 
you got your mean and standard deviation. So it looks like you've already done part of this. This is good. Dosage. Okay, this is good. And your dosage appears to be in micrograms per milliliter. These actually do not and probably should not be after each of these. I would stick it right in here in parentheses. And also, what is the error of your measuring device that you're using? I don't know, but I'm going to assume you might have a really cheap measuring device at your house, but maybe I'm wrong about that. This is where, how accurate is this? I have uh, several of these in my classroom, and some of them are precise down to like 0 0.001 microgram, which are not quite that precise, but some are precise only to 20 mi micrograms plus or minus. You know what I'm saying? And so that's where you want to specify uh, your your units is micrograms per milliliters, and what is your plus or minus on this? How accurate is it? Refer to my manual for that, but this otherwise is good. And you don't need to put control here. Just put 0, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. By the way, I love that you used a logarithmic scale here, and hopefully you talked about that in your background if I didn't skip over that real fast. Trial 1 through trial 6. Okay, you've got five trials, actually six trials, beautiful, with the mean standard deviation. The only thing is I have no idea when I look at this what these numbers mean. That's where you're going to want a separate row above these here to title it, and this dependent variable. Obviously, we talked about measuring the presence of guanine. Well, what exactly is these units representing? And that's the only thing you're missing here. Otherwise, this table looks fantastic, and I'm glad you're getting numbers already on this, but definitely have a title here a heading above your dependent variables so we know what these measurements are. And uh, yeah, otherwise looks pretty good. Yeah, all right, otherwise it looks pretty good with that. Um, yeah, we'll just go with that right there. Okay, otherwise, let me know if you need any more help on it. I think you're off to a good start. A big thing is probably just your formatting right now and you, the probably the biggest thing is elaborating on your procedure, okay? Okay, this next lab here, We are re I uh, do like how this is laid out. Notice how you have these separate headings, so they stand out much more against the rest. I like that. The effect, okay, this isn't a question the way it's worded, so just start off with what is the effect. This could be your title, actually, to your research paper, so this isn't bad. The effect of the amount of baking powder on the height of banana muffins. Actually, this isn't a bad lab. Very simple, something you can do in your house. Um, the amount of baking powder measured in grams and the height of banana muffins. Uh, I have no idea how to make banana muffins, but I'm pretty sure baking powder is used to create the bubbles in order to make these nice and puffy. So I'd say this is pretty good title and pretty good, easy to do in your house. Okay, here's where I need to really know all about banana muffins and all this stuff and maybe even how to make them or whatever ingredients you use. But certainly we want to hear about why you're doing this and about why baking powder is a variable. So you say, between baking powder and soda, they're known to help with baking goods rise, but only baking powder. Okay. Choose baking powder. Because of this, I decided. I also decided to use baking powder. Um, this sentence here, maybe elaborate a little more on this, but otherwise, it's pretty good. I decided to use baking powder and did research difference. So be research set on recipes. Acidic. That is true, actually. I learned that myself a few years ago because I wasn't sure of the specific differences there. Okay, so I get why you chose baking powder, but there doesn't need to be justification on this. Uh, again, why are you doing this lab? Do you like cooking? Do you want to make the best banana muffins and you're trying to figure out how to make them taste the best? Uh, again, why? Connect this to yourself and how does this make the world better? How can this be practically used in cooking? Because could you expand this to other things as well? But again, why baking powder? What's it doing? Because ultimately, it is releasing carbon dioxide gas, which makes things that are gluten-y kind of puff up, and people like the texture. None of that's talked about in here. What is the chemical composition of baking powder? Uh, likewise, what are banana muffins? What do they use? Um, are there any ethical things to consider with this? Are there any hazards, chemical hazards? If there are none, again, anything you can talk about is relevant here. None of this is really talked about here with this, okay? Hypothesis and explanation. The more baking powder used, the weaker the effect on the height of banana muffins. Um, I'm not sure I'd use the weaker the effect, but the banana muffins will grow less. The more, ba the more baking powder used, the less the banana muffins will grow in height. 
I'm guessing that's what you're trying to say. This is because the article, um, I would say my research, I wouldn't just refer me to an article. It doesn't necessarily result in a high rise. Um, and again, why? None of this was really talked about up here. So please elaborate on what's happening. What's the chemical basis for why it's not rising or why it is rising? Okay. Um, identification of variables, independent variable, the amount of baking powder. All right, I like this. You've got grams. This is good. But what are the increments used? Uh, you know, what are if we go to your table, there's your increments. Okay. So you want to throw this in here as well. The height of banana muffin in centimeters. This part people do quite a bit. Uh, when it says in, sometimes it can be mistaken for inches. I would just say height of banana muffins and then put comma centimeters or just say height of banana muffins and then right after it just leave the CM in there. And this isn't necessary to put in grams in centimeters. We, we should scientifically know what these units are. And that way there's no confusion with it. Okay, identification of controls of constants. For this lab, I can think there's a lot of things. Temperature, absolutely batter. Measurements, they'll be using the same device time, same amount of time in the oven. Um, are the ovens preheated, by the way? Do the doors get open on them? Um, I'm thinking about how many times you're stirring something. How do you ensure they're all well mixed? Um, what about using this, I mean, what if you use different volumes? I mean, between all of your banana breads, how do you ensure all of them are the exact same? I assume you're putting bananas in them, so are they receiving the same amount of bananas, the same amount of flour? Uh, what about the amount of baking soda? Um, baking soda, if I'm not mistaken, may react if you put it in too early. So is there a way to ensure that they all have baking soda in them for the same amount of time? Again, you've got a lot to develop here, so please think about this. Material list looks good, okay, as long as you're not using metric or, or imperial units, but so far looks good. Procedure, okay, this procedure probably needs some redefining, and also it would be good to have diagrams in here because this is all just kind of a long, lengthy procedure. Procedure, I would say in any lab like this that's cooking, you're going to want to break this up into like a prep, like how to prepare your banana bread and then, like another section, put a heading above it and say, baking, like how do you bake it? And then a third section, measuring the height afterwards or something. Um, instead, you've got it all thrown together and, you know, it's just better communication. Let's see, sanitize, make sure the oven is clean. Okay, that's, that's relevant. Dry bowls, mash, cinnamon. In the same bowl. See, if you're just setting these up, does it really matter that this part is in here? Really mix with the mixer to fully incorporate the ingredients together, then let it sit. Second bowl, crack the eggs. Okay, now we've got the ingredient. So I'm going to just kind of skip this over here. I like that you're using Celsius for 10 minutes. Okay, you preheated it. This is good, but again, throw that in your constants list up there. The wet mixture. Which the batter is made, grease, cupcake, tin. Cool off. Okay, I like that you have the time that they're out before you measure them to allow them to cool off and maybe settle a little bit. Time measure the rise from the rim of the cupcake liner. Here's where you want a diagram to illustrate because some cupcake uh, containers are not shaped the same. So doesn't the shape of the container also matter? What if it has kind of a beveled edge to the edge versus a very crisp and sharp edge? Might that affect the outcome? Repeat the same step for each trial. Again, you got some more things to elaborate here on. Uh, but otherwise, amount of baking soda, grams, plus or minus one. Actually, you would put plus or minus grams at the end and put the whole thing in parentheses. Uh, again, refer to my manual to see how to do this. And what this is saying here is your accuracy is as accurate to a decimal point here. Okay, a whole decimal point. Um, so are these accurate to a whole gram? Is your Does your measuring device go like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 grams? then you would change this. But if it just goes one gram, two gram, three gram, four gram on your scale, then yeah, it would be plus or minus just one gram. Okay, otherwise, uh, look, that's up to you though. Uh, I like you got, a con you got a control and you're making these in increments and I can see they're even increments, which is good. 
By the way, why did you pick 16 grams? Um, surely in your background, you can investigate a good amount or find. tell us why you picked 0 to 16 as your range. Because I don't know anything about banana bread or baking soda. I would have just put in like 100 grams and made it taste awful, but that would have told me I need to put less in it. How did you come up with 16 grams? You're going to want to talk about that. Um, also, if you're doing purple for your heading here, put the trials in your too, because this is all kind of part of your headings. It just kind of makes it look better. The height of the banana muffins above the rim. This is good, but again, put in the whole thing in parentheses, plus or minus one centimeter or whatever you're using in your ruler, okay? Uh, a ruler typically measures to a tenth of a centimeter, so you would say 0.1 centimeter if you're using a ruler, Okay. Otherwise, this looks good. You've got your trials, mean, standard. I think this looks good. You just got to work on the stuff we talked about. Okay, next one. How does the temperature of water used when creating sourdough starter yeast impact final height of a loaf of bread? That's a long research question. Temperature of the water used creating the sourdough starter yeast I'm assuming this is like a special thing, recipe that you're doing. I'm just not very good at baking or anything, but that's okay. I just was trying to understand this here. Impact the final height of the loaf. This is, all right. As it stands, this is actually a pretty good research question. I see you got a clear variable, uh, independent and dependent variable. Looks good. And it's a baking lab, so this should be pretty easy. No, that means I need to understand in your background what the heck you're baking what made you do it? What are some ethical considerations? What about chemicals? If they're not, if nothing's dangerous, then talk about it. Uh, what about, what do you know about the biochemical nature of temperature and how it makes things rise to begin with? And then what made you pick out certain aspects of your lab? Let's see what you got. For thousands of years, humans have used yeast. This is a good name of the yeast is essential carbon dioxide. Because yeast ferments, it releases CO2, causing bread to rise. And in our one cell, this is beautiful. Nice job. So you've established why this is happening here. Uh, biotechnology. Yeast can be used to take pain medication. So you're talking about right now the benefits of yeast. Okay. Baker's yeast can be used to transform sugar. Okay. So, so far, we're still talking about yeast. Therefore, the study of yeast will be an important in the future of medicine. Thus, the study, and I was, I got to be honest, I was thinking, just because I see this a lot, this person's not going to go anywhere with this, and then, bam, you proved me wrong. Nice job. Therefore, the study of yeast will be an important in the future of medicine, thus the study of which the conditions of yeast thrive best under, as discussed, is highly relevant. Nice, outstanding job. They're tying this all together. Absolutely. Um, only thing I would add here is make sure you throw in um, a little bit about the biochemical nature or maybe the cooking process itself and what you're doing. Because you're making this loaf of bread. Maybe tie it in together with cooking somehow. But also, what about yourself and what about ethical considerations of this experiment? This is really what we need to see here too. This lab's probably not got a lot of ethical things, but even talk about because of the chemicals used, this is not a hazard or something like that. Just, again, try to tie that in there. other Because it's so good, you don't want to miss out on that. Hypothesis. If the temperature of the water used increases, then the height of the loaf will increase before falling again significantly. If the temperature of the water used and the starter yeast increases, then the height of the loaf will increase before falling significantly again. Okay, very good. The only thing you need is an explanation, and it looks like you tied it in down here. Very good. Yeast ferments. Yeast died at 60. Very good. That is actually true. It actually depends on the type of yeast, too, I might add, but very good explanation. Okay, the only other thing I would throw here right now is you have an uh, uh, inconsistent font. If you notice, you go from tiny to large, and your headings are pretty large, too, which that's not bad, but just try to be consistent with your fonts here. Okay, temperature will be measured in Celsius. You could just literally put here um, temperature, just put a C with a degree symbol. I think on your computer, if you're using a Mac, it's like Alt 07 or, or 0176 or something, but there's what are called alt codes. I actually have in the back of that IA manual different alt codes that give you the cool symbols, but uh, just to simplify it. The only thing we want to do too is what are your temperature increments? If I go to your, your table, here they are. 
So it looks like in Celsius, you are giving me 80 all the way through 140. And by the way, that looks pretty warm. So let's see what you got. Oops. Identification of variables. So we have temperature. Give us those increments we saw on the table and the height. Okay. Now you're going to want to control with a lab like this. So again, what would be the control with something like your control group here? Now you're using temperature of the yeast right, whoops, and to go down here, you're measuring the height of the loaf of bread. I would say in this case, even though it's not really being baked or anything, um, you probably are going to want room temperature to be the control, which room temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. And from there, I would expand it to the other increments. So that's the only thing I would probably add advice to on this section here, okay? Also, I see this a lot, so don't feel bad about this, but you see how you said measure in centimeters. Um, to somebody who's moderating this and doesn't know a lot, they might say, does this person mean inches or centimeters? Hmm. So I would not put any of this. I would just put CM in here. The height, CM, of the loaf of bread. That's clear enough. Okay. This is good. Constance controls. You've got a list in how you're going to maintain it. And you've got a nice long list. Very good. The only thing I would add here to this is that you maybe find a way to... Uh, italicize these or bold in them just to like let the title the heading stand out for each of these before you put your explanation okay, otherwise you've got a very nice long list here and I'm sure we can rip this apart if we wanted to be mean but for the most part it looks like you came up with a large amount of things here to keep this controlled okay so we have your materials list here I like how you have yeast starter very nice communication how you put these also um I know you're told this in a lot of your English classes, but you do not need to have these all double spaced. This is not, in fact, your IA has a 12 page limit with the title. So you don't have to space these all out if that helps you a little bit here. Plus it keeps them all on the same. Because if you look, this entire material list is taking, you know, a page and a half and it doesn't need to. All right, procedure. And thank you, beautiful. You've got a heading here like this and it's putting, or you've got a heading like this and it's making a subheading all the way over here, making the bread, making the yeast, combining it together. Um, and you got making the bread. I'd say overall, the biggest thing you probably want to have in here is some type of procedure, pictures, anything you have of the process. But it looks pretty good here. And you've got a little inconsistency I noticed by calling 60 G then 60 grams. Okay, pour water into the pot, heat up the stove. Just reading this through real quick. I like that you gave it a waiting period. And I like that you said six minutes. Why six minutes, by the way? Is that just a number you're pulling out of thin air or to ensure it's evenly mixed? I mean, just something to think about. It's just showing an awareness. Um, and yeah, we do want to use grams, but I do like that you put cups in here because you're trying to show that you're you can use different units as long as you're using the metric as your primary here okay so so far i'm thinking of a recipe here and this is where this is going to be tough because i'm trying to follow a recipe and look for little plot holes here last rock 21 degrees why 21 degrees i in a room that is i guess room temperature Cutting board, dome center, fold over. This is where you're going to want a diagram of the folding, kind of like an origami illustration. How do you want to do this here? Parchment paper on the bottom of the bread pan, let it rise. Okay. Um, so you're putting a flat parchment sheet on a bread pan, putting the dough on top and letting it rise. Um, that's not too bad, but because the bread is just kind of in a ball, isn't it possible that it doesn't rise as much as it normally would. So what if you had a way to put something around it to help it pop up, like in a muffin tin or something, you, you know, get what I'm saying, versus just letting it open on three sides, you know, the or the sides and the top, that's not, that might be an issue with control there, I would say, because some of the, some of the bread put there in higher temperatures might uh, subliminate a little bit and be a little bit more uh, viscous than breads of a cooler temperature. And that might, you know, necessarily, they might be fermenting, but that because of their viscosity and everything, that might 
add that extra variable. So I would throw that as my big advice for your procedure. Otherwise, how are you measuring the height of the loaf, by the way? Are you putting it right through the middle? Or are you just kind of eyeballing it? And if it's really wide, that might be a little inconsistent. But again, there's little maybe you put a diagram or something there. But so far, pretty good. If I look at your water temperature, degrees Celsius, I would just put the C as a symbol with a degree. And also, how precise is your measurement? Are you using a thermometer that is very imprecise? Or are you using a digital thermometer, which is more precision? What you want to see is plus or minus you get plus or minus one degree Celsius, plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius, or is your thermometer very, very poor and it's like plus or minus five degrees Celsius? Don't know. That's up to you as long as you got something in there for that. Same with the height of the bread. What kind of measuring device? Is it plus or minus one centimeter, half, 0.5 centimeters? Just something to be aware of. And uh, so far, I like it. Everything looks good on your table. The only thing I would critique, though, is you want a control group. And again, why did you pick these units? You 140 degrees is uh, it's above boiling point. That's, a, I mean, that's a very hot temperature. Um, and I guess you bake you do bake bread in this, but I was under the assumption yeast do not survive at those temperatures. And wait, I was just thinking about this. This isn't even a baking temperature. This is a water temperature. 140 degrees of water temperature, that's going to be, boy, that's overboiling. In fact, all most of these water would be steaming at that point. So I think you mean Fahrenheit and you want to adjust this. But again, what is your control? And in your background, why did you talk about that particular temperature? So just something to think about, okay? Okay, I design. I like how you separated these into different sections like this. Your question, to what extent does consuming caffeine affect the heart rate of teenagers? That's a decent lab. Caffeine consumption on the heart rate of teenagers. All right, trying to figure this one out here. I like how you're using your personal thought. This is good. But I definitely think there's some more things to elaborate on here with us. Um, so you're talking about caffeine being bad for you. Um, but ultimately, I don't really see much about the heart rate. Why does the heart rate work? What have you researched that caf that would give you the idea caffeine would affect your heart rate? We talked about being nervous here. Does caffeine make you nervous or does it actually affect the brain? Um, this is where you might even want to have a diagram of a caffeine molecule. Maybe a diagram of the vagus nerve in the brain and how it connects to the uh, SA and AV nodes on the heart uh, that make the heart beat, how it connects to the medulla of the brain, which allows the heart to accelerate or slow down. I don't know. These are things, I mean, really, what do you know about the heart? What do you know about caffeine and its effect on the body that would lead you to think caffeine would affect heart rate? And you're doing teenagers too, by the way. So that gives you, that means you got to get even more specific. Why teenagers? Why did you pick them and just not all people? Uh, so these are just things to think about here. I do like that you tied this in because you said caffeine is a catalyst to your anxiety and you wanted to see if you can drastic or if caffeine has an effect and maybe you can slow it down. So maybe a little more to elaborate, but definitely you've got to do more than just give us a background here on this. You've got to give us a background on the heart and caffeine itself. Okay. And again, why teenagers? Why did you pick that specifically, or do you just want to toss that and use any age group, okay? Caffeine will raise the heart of teenagers, but not much. Heart rate to be a maximum of 10 beats per minute. Caffeine is supposed to awaken. Okay, so you're just throwing a, you know, this isn't to be mean or anything, but a very simplistic explanation down here. <clears throat> but if we look here, you're giving very specific predictions raised a maximum of 10 beats per minute, minimum of 3 beats per minute. Where did you come up with these numbers? You, you don't have to have a number. You could just say heart rate will raise, but to a certain point, or it will keep on raising indefinitely. Um, I mean, what? why these specific predictions here? And your basis is very, uh, well, should I say it's not really much of a basis at all in that last sentence. So please either make a less specific prediction but either way, please make sure you have a much more in-depth explanation with that. That's also tied into your background. Variables. you got the amount of caffeine in milligrams. This is good. 
Um, but I need to see increments. How much increments of caffeine are you going to use? And if I go to your table, here's your increments right there. So you want to throw those next to the amount of caffeine. You've got your heart rate defined in beats per minute. That is good. And uncertainties. Uh, this list doesn't necessarily have to be here. This will all be kind of talked about in your uh, the end of your lab itself, too. But this is okay to talk about. I love your formatting of this section. Underlying the heading, and then you wrote here how you're going to keep these controlled. It looks like you got a good size list, but I can almost think there's probably even more things you could come up with as you think about your lab itself. But I like how you're thinking about exactly the type of drink, where the people will be, what they're doing prior to this, the time of day. All right, let's see what you got. And if I read your procedure, we should start to see these things appear. Okay, material list looks good. All right, procedure. I like how you have subheadings for this. Very nice, very nice. You got your setup and then you got your experiment. The only thing I would throw out there is for something like this, especially when you're preparing something, be definitely good to have a diagram or something like this to help elaborate how you're going to set these up. So I can see here you got four cups with this, one cup with this, one cup with this, lastly one cup. Definitely have a diagram or something so I can see how you're setting this up. I mean, again, pretend you're a science teacher and you were having your class do this lab. I mean, you, would, you know how kids can be at lab counters and how much you know, five students at a counter can confuse each other. So make it as easy for us to understand what you're doing as possible here. Frappuccino. Okay, so two bottles of this Frappuccino. Um, I'm seeing these, these increments here. Why are we using these increments? I assume you're dividing the cup up, but again, these are just kind of random numbers. Make sure you have you show us your justification for why you're putting these amounts in there. I assume this is because you're measuring a percentage of caffeine, but again, that is not really elaborated. Why 234 of the Frappuccino? Okay. Uh, again, that's all stuff that could be talked about in your background, too. Ask participants to sign the form. Allowing, this needs to be talked about in your background, too, because this is part of your ethical consideration. Um, should Actually, this should probably be at the start of the setup ahead of everything, too. So it's kind of thrown in here. Your participants haven't eaten or drinking or drink. All right, experiment. Measure the resting heart rate by to wrist or neck by placing two measures. You mean fingers or a probe or something? Again, be specific. Okay, so you're gonna count how many times you feel a pulse for 15 seconds. My only issue with this is 15 seconds has a lot of uncertainty to it. Uh, you could do it, but, you know, 15 seconds is a very quick, but it's not a very, um, it's not a very good measurement, I should say, a way to measure this. But there are other ways to do this. You, well, anyways, you could use a cell phone app or something that measures your heart rate. It doesn't matter. Just something to think about, okay? Write the heart rate down the participant in the corresponding column. Give them then the caffeine. Let them drink it at once. Wait 30 minutes. Measure the heart rate after the 30 minutes. You have not decided which television show yet, but okay, definitely think of something. And why did you pick that television show, by the way? Remember, what is a comedy show to somebody might be offensive and might be a horror movie to somebody else. So how do you pick something? Just something that, again, as long as it's the same thing for everybody. Measure the heart rate of the participant using the same method and record the data. Wait 30 more minutes, continue watching the show. Better be a good show if you're going to make people wait that long. Wait 30 more minutes. Okay. So I think you and I talked about this before, that you were having them increase their dosage of caffeine, waiting 30 minutes because you were going to have them metabolize the caffeine. And you were saying that the 30 minutes was to allow their body time to metabolize. And again, if we go back up here to the background, none of this is explored. That is a very important topic. Why 30 minutes? And what is your sources for justifying 30 minutes for metabolizing that caffeine so that it's not compounding into each additional dosage? Okay. Again, something to think about. Now, your data table. If I look at this here, first thing is you want to keep this on the same page, even if you have to bump these down. So definitely don't do this when you have your final lap. 
Got the amount of caffeine in milligrams. I like this here, how it's labeled like this. Uh, by the way, how specific is it? Could it be off by a few thousandth of a milligram? So is it plus or minus 0.1 milligram, 0.001 milligrams, or plus or minus one milligram? Just let us know. What do you think the uncertainty is? And the caffeine's effect on teenager heart rates. Well, well, how are you measuring heart rates? I assume it's in beats per minute. But again, what's the uncertainty? I can tell you measuring it in 15-second intervals is not a very... Um, is not very precise compared to measuring it for a full minute or using a heart rate monitor. So you might wanna consider that as well, okay? Other thing here too, and this is minor, but I think you'll see what I'm talking about. The way you have this bracketed here, doesn't it appear that the caffeine's effect also encompasses the caffeine column? But really this caffeine's effect is really only encompassing these trials and the average here. So you're gonna to wanna to think about that too. Uh, this should be divided here is what I'm saying because it's not in, it's this is the independent variable and this is the dependent variable all of this otherwise it looks pretty straightforward um, got a few things you can adjust on here the biggest thing is your background but I do like how you have your setting your your subsections all divided in that and that should be pretty straightforward